It's time for the mic drop. I'm each show going deep on one topic affecting our community in hopes we can all learn a little more. In the immediate aftermath of George Floyd's murder, most right-minded Americans called for some sort of reform in the way law enforcement interacts with certain members of the public at large. And I say some sort because at the time, we didn't know exactly what that should look like. But we did know that something had to change. And it wasn't just us. Again, at the time, most elected leaders and members of law enforcement agreed and made pledges to implement new policies. Or at least, you know, study implementing new policies. But, as we've seen between then and now, there hasn't been a whole lot of movement on that front. The George Floyd Justice and Policing Act stalled in the Senate. Talks of defunding the police, which doesn't mean anything other than reallocating the substantial monetary resources to other areas in efforts to improve policing, are held out as a betrayal of law enforcement. As if we're not allowed to demand that our public servants do better. Now, having said this, there are reform efforts happening on the local level that seem promising and illustrate a way forward for the rest of the country. Like last fall, the city of Alexandria instituted ACORP, the Alexandria Co-Response Program, pairing a member of the Alexandria Police Department with a member of the Department of Community and Human Services. Together, the pair will respond to calls involving people who may best be served by a professional armed with mental health knowledge rather than a taser or a gun, called a co-response team. And per a report commissioned by the city of Alexandria, the results have been positive so far. According to the report compiled by the Omni Institute, the new co-response team responded to 145 out of 958 behavioral health calls made between October of last year and February of this year. Of those calls, 45% were resolved on scene, 36% were given resources or referrals to community services or were provided voluntary transport to hospitals or shelters. Only 13% of those calls resulted in involuntary transport. In total, one of the most positive signs for the program, 71% of the calls that could have resulted in arrest did not. And in one such call, the team was actually able to calm down a situation involving a person displaying suicidal behavior with a knife in hand. Despite the fear caused in the person by the heavy presence of police units, the team was able to gain their trust, get the knife, and take them to the hospital to get the help that they needed. And that is just one example showing us how police reform can be done. That there is, in fact, a better way. And the city of Alexandria agrees. They have earmarked funds for adding two more co-response teams. Programs like these appear to be gaining traction, and that's a very good thing. And not just in our area, by the way, because Fairfax County also has one, but nationwide, as they should. We can take steps to bridge the gap between the police departments and the communities they serve by lowering fear and raising trust. And that at the end of the day is the goal, to bridge that gap. So I wanna say bravo to the city of Alexandria for showing us that it in fact works and showing us what reform can look like.